You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website RickAckerman.com. Welcome back to the show, Rick. Always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for inviting me on. Rick, uh, what kind of state are we in in the markets? They look uh, pretty positive right now. Yeah, the market's making a uh, all-in bet on Trump, and I don't think it's the, the market's got it wrong. Uh, the market hasn't been gaslighted like all the all the pundits who seem to think that Harris is running neck and neck. She's not. Uh, anybody who watched uh, Brett Baer's interview of Harris last night will understand why she's not even a vile viable candidate uh much less running even with trump so so the market is in full lunatic mode nothing's going to stop it uh i did put that out as a commentary a month ago that uh, the market was going to continue higher to waft higher until the election but um i think trump's going to inherit an insoluble mess we're in a bubble the bubble's going to pop with Trump in charge, and uh, I don't know if he'll get the blame. It depends on how quickly the market's collapse occurs after the election. Now, gold, is it going to uh, prop things up? What's the story there? I've got a 2803 target basis to December COMEX contract, and uh, that leaves a little rally room, but I think it's going to uh, hit some resistance there. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing 2803, but it looks like a pretty good bet. Uh, current price, uh, hang on here, let me get you an up to the moment price. This is COMEX uh, December is 2704. So we've got another 100 points to go before gold hits something solid. And um, we'll, we'll see from there. I'm not, I'm not a gold going to infinity uh, guy. I just think gold will do well relative to all other classes of investables. And we're certainly in a time right now where you should be allocating at least 15, 20, 25 percent to gold investments. Now, you said there is kind of a a Trump rally going on in the market. Uh, Is this due to the White House like they like to do before every election, trying to pump things up, maybe secretly buying stocks? Well, I think the market always takes the optimistic scenario, um, and certainly uh, Harris would be a disaster. I'd have to say if she, if the, the Democrats cheat their way to another victory, and that's the only way they could conceivably get it, uh, this market is going to register shock and awe like you haven't seen before. We'll be down 5,000 points in the, uh, on a Dow in just a day or two. Um, and or at least a week anyway and i think it's all downhill from there so uh so the market it's it's made a pretty firm bet here and apparently the the betting odds if not the polls are saying that uh, trump's got it in the bag Mm -hmm. now after he becomes president what do you expect to see um the, the, the economic forces have always been much bigger than presidents. You know, uh, it's not a question of a uh, president uh, did things that made the stock market go higher. The market is just a, a rabid beast. It, it doesn't really respond to facts or presidents or anything like that. So the economic cycles that drive the bond markets and, and, and the dollar uh, are they're way bigger than presidents. And a president can only be lucky or unlucky as to when he takes office. In the case of, let's say, uh, um, the, the George uh, Herbert H.W. Bush, um, he he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, he just got hit with recession and he lost the election. Uh, Clinton was probably memorably the most fortunate president. He came uh, into the presidency in a, in a big upswing. And, of course, we attribute... Not, not that he did everything wrong, but uh, we attribute the, the market strength and happy days to things that Clinton did. But in reality, the market is just following its own it, it, it's cyclical muse. We'll have more with Rick Ackerman right after this. Don't miss out. 
Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rick Ackerman. Rick, what's the story with crude? I don't know. Yeah. You tell me. You talk to a lot of good guys. To, uh, <laughs> crude crude uh, is... Um, you can't short it because any day, you know, you know crude, it, it's it's interesting that the world's largest commodity market is just a big rig carnival game. Uh, we know that because every time gas at the pump gets down to $3 a gallon and we're motors are feeling uh, some uh, encouragement that that's the bottom for crude. Crude starts up. So we know that the markets are sort of rigged according to what's uh, what's. The, the revenue side and uh, the pump price is really where, well, literally where the rubber hits the road. So, um, so every time it gets the, the pump price is three bucks, we can pretty much know that crude is going to start reversing, uh, which it's done. But I'm not so sure how far it can get. You know, on a supply and demand basis, the biggest buyer at the margin, China, is. Uh, unable to get its uh to crank up its economy so um if china's manufacturing is weak then demand for fuel at the margin is weak but you always have a um uh a counterfactor there because the geopolitical influences can overwhelm whatever supply and demand might might dictate um so we're in that situation now. You know, the nutty, completely rigged crude market took a wild move up uh, when it looked like Israel might might be um, contemplating a uh, bombing raid that would have taken out the uh, oil, the natural gas and oil capacity of Iran. And then, of course, we had a headline that Israel had... Um, worked out a deal with, uh, uh, quote, Joe Biden, unquote, and uh, that they weren't going to bomb any oil depots. And so then crude, naturally, because it's a rig market, it didn't simply respond to that news. It it, uh, it collapsed for a, a, a little bit. So the markets are completely rigged and opportunistic and wild swings within a $20 range are just uh, the big boys uh, making money the easy way. Now, uh, the International Energy uh, Agency, or so, uh, IG, well, anyway, I know the initials. It's saying uh, crude is going to peak in 2030. Now, yeah, like they we, know. Yeah, well, we've heard this uh, oil was going to peak in 1979, I recall, as well. And then it would be declining I, production. <laughs> yeah, I think you should tune all that stuff out. They don't know. They don't know anything. Um, the, the only thing... That they do know, and, I, and I'm not speaking about the Energy Commission, but I saw a pretty good presentation done by, uh, it was uh, UBS's uh, energy expert. This was at a luncheon a long time ago in, in Boulder. And the point was, when you look at the pie and where we get all our energy, some of it from solar, some of it from, fo- most of it from fossil fuels, and so on and so forth, it takes forever to to. to to change the uh, the pie, you know, to go from 11% solar to 20% represents an enormous investment in infrastructure and, and, and a long, long, like 20 years long lead time. So the pie is not going to change. But, um, but uh, there was an interesting story the other day that, uh, that Google uh, was going to start um, build, work running AI power of uh, small nuclear generators. And uh, I don't know whether this is the beginning of a trend, but uh, you may have read that uh, exploiting AI will take enormous amounts of computer power. So, uh, uh, and there was another interesting story that was talking about Taiwan's uh, chip production, and that's very energy intensive. And the problem for Taiwan is uh, a question of can they get enough electrical power uh, to run these giant fab plants, and uh, they're sort of up against a the wall there. So the only obvious solution 
to generate lots more power is uh, is nuclear. I mean, that's that's it, plain and simple. Well, Microsoft uh, just bought Three Mile Island so that they have their own atomic power plant for their uh, major AI brain factory. Yeah, and it's interesting, really, that a fraud like AI should be driving real investment in energy. Um, you know, everybody's got this, this, everybody's all in with AI because it's very good promotionally. I, you know, I, I could tell you that Rick's Picks is gone. We're, we're now all AI oriented and uh, it's just a sales gimmick. Uh, again, and I've repeated this point 10 times in talking with you. To me, AI is no better than auto, auto spell, auto text or te- you know, uh, auto correct text. Yeah, it's, it stinks. And if they can't get that right in the context of what they have the chutzpah to call a, a large language model, if they can't get small language right, how are they going to get large language right? And the, the only thing I see in AI, the only potential that I see, or not, not potential, I shouldn't say that, but, but in a practical sense, well, all I'm seeing is AI to uh, relieve people of their jobs. And it's so... It's hideous, appalling where you see that happening already. You know, if you watch a, uh, uh, there, there was an MTV video on Eric Clapton, and uh, it, it was, uh, the, this was on TV, and they streamed the music, but they also stream, streamed a video that w- purportedly accompanied the music. And the, the video was so insipid. It was so lacking in imagination and creativity uh, that, that, to me, that's the future of entertainment. We're going to be entertained almost entirely, other than you know live performances by uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, we're going to be we're going to have AI streaming at us uh, in ways that are so unimaginative, so uncreative that y- you know they're going to they're going to just take the world by storm well you can do that with tv shows right now obviously if it's not ai writing it it might as well be because you can mouth the words something happens oh look the police are here why are the police here there must have been a killing Uh, like that was a really hard script to write Uh, i mean there's no imagination to it and you can tell if something's written, written by ai because there's no emotion they won't say, you know, down by 27 points, the frustration and, and the grit and the grime were digging at their eyes and into their hearts, and they were trying to find a way to win. You'll never find anything emotional in it. It was, they were down 23 points, they came back. That, that'll be well, AI. They won't talk about, how, you know, feeling, feelings, and if they do put feelings into it, they'll be the wrong feelings. He was so happy his boat was about to be torpedoed. Well, my, yeah. my touchstone is the movie Idiocracy, and you have to see it to understand what the future looks like, but, but if we, when we reach the point where we're watching a sitcom on TV, the characters are essentially AI-licensed um, avatars for whoever. You could have a Dick Van Dyke show, and you could use Dick Van Dyke's likeness uh, to, to recreate him, it would be, you would see the actor on television because they can already, they can already do that. They can bring people back from the dead. They can have, uh, you know, Fred Astaire dancing with the dirt devil or whatever. And so you're going to have a phony actor and the sitcom is going to be scripted by AI. And there's going to be a, a laugh track where they crank everything, uh, I, I, I can't even watch shows with the laugh track. So that's it. That's your that's your uh, hat trick of AI in the, in TV sitcoms. We're watching uh, an AI script with uh, AI generated uh, likenesses of the original actors, and uh, and the laugh track. They'll probably even use AI to be more scientific about where, when, and how loud. The, the phony laughter comes in. Yeah, well, I hate sitcoms with laugh tracks, too. I know when to laugh, and if I'm not laughing, it's not funny. Yeah, and that was a problem for me with Seinfeld. I think Seinfeld was a, a good show. The, con- the concept was good. It was well executed. 
uh, but it had a laugh track, and so that made it unwatchable for me. Uh, on the other hand, some, some of the best comedies ever, like the Gary Shandling show, did not have a laugh track, and that, I think that made a lot of difference, not that, not that anybody really noticed. Well, I... Uh... I love Gary Shandling. Plus, being in radio, TV, and you go, this is so real. The audience has no idea. It's like the duck on the lake. He's nice and calm, and the feet are just churning like crazy underneath. That's what's going on on your favorite TV show during a newscast where everybody's cool and collected. Behind the scenes, people are running around, uh, you know, throwing scripts at each other. And have you got this? Have you got that? Uh, and then, of course, they, they throw in who's sleeping with who. <laughs> well, it was a great show, and I think it certainly benefited from not having had a laugh track. Uh, it was just uh, a, a head and shoulders above everything else that was on at the time. Uh, anything else we have to be keeping a close eye on, Rick? Um, it's maybe yeah, it's like always premature to start liking bonds, but I mentioned having uh, allocating. Uh, more heavily in gold. Uh, you got to have gold here, even if you're not a believer in $5,000 an ounce. But uh, the bonds are so far out of favor. They look so horrible that I, I can only uh, infer that they're uh, of a screaming buy right now. Rick, thank you so much for chatting with us. And thank you, Jim. I always appreciate the chance to connect with your guys. My guest has been Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website, rickackerman.com. If you have any questions for Rick or for any of our guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on X at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.